Good morning, nerd fam, and welcome back to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. It is day three of Dell Tech World, midway through day three. It's been an absolutely fantastic week here. My name's Savannah Peterson, joined by Cube co-founder and my co-host for the day, uh, John Furrier. John, what's the coolest thing you learned about Dell this week? Um, I bet they had the AI factory, I thought it was a very cool announcement. That to me is, love the messaging, I said it to them before the event. Hitching their wagon to NVIDIA is a good call. NVIDIA hit a home run this year with their conference GTC in San Jose, and it just sets the tone that there's a whole other generation coming, and we're going to flip the script, and it's going to be a point in time where we say, okay, there's now the old way and now the new way, and I think we're going to usher in an era of new stuff, all the way up and down the stack. Hardware, <laughs> PCs, new stuff. I mean, all new things are coming, so it's going to be cool, and this interview should be right on the line with that. Speaking of cool, very excited to welcome our new guest and my new friend, Bob Venero, CEO and founder of Future Tech Enterprise. Bob, how are you doing? I'm doing great, enjoying today, glad to be a part of the show. You're getting to sit down with a lot of cool people today. Yes, yes, I am. Had a little time with Damon John, you got us. Yes, it's we're gonna here. Try, yeah, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna try and be as cool. What, what's your high level takeaways from the week so far? Uh, Obviously, AI is on the forefront of everything. I think even in the lunchroom, uh, the AI table. Yeah. It's really, it, it's really uh, uh, a foundation of what we're seeing out there. It was great seeing Michael on stage by, with, uh, I'm calling them the Avenger, the Avenger partners, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, it, it's, the it's, AI celebrity group? Yeah, the yeah. AI celebrity group, right? Yeah. They just need to put on their Avenger outfits, I AI, love that. and let's go. Yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, so the show's been amazing for us so far. We have over 100 customers here. Wow. Uh, yeah, with us, and so we're cool. really, we're really loving getting them integrated into what this is all bringing, you know, for them today. Yeah, I, I, I love that. Actually, Michael was sitting right where you're sitting yesterday. Oh, excellent. Yeah. yeah so you're one of the AI adventures as well. That yeah, is, I'm the short, bold AI guy. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a market for that. <laughs> we Talk about your, really before, fast. before we get into the conversation, <laughs> set the context. On the, off the rails. Set the context for what you guys do. What's, the, what's your company do? What's the main mission? So literally, I mean, we are, uh, I don't want to call us a traditional solution provider, we're the untraditional uh, uh, um, solution provider. You know, we've, we've really looked at how do we do things different than most of other companies out there. We're actually one of Dell's first partners in 2008 when Dell decided to go into the channel. Um, wow. Yeah, and Michael actually came out to New York, sat down with us, and we kind of put a business plan together, and it's been about $4 billion later uh, over the last 15 years, I guess, together we've been working. Congratulations. So, wow, uh, congratulations. Thank not, you. Not yeah. a casual figure to drop. No, no, definitely not. It, well, we had a vision of what Michael's vision was, mm -hmm. and we knew that he was going to be the guy that could make it happen. And my God, if you look 15 years from then to now, I mean, it is light years different. So uh, we yeah. made the right bet. And you got a lot of things going on. You work at Apex, PC as a service. Uh, Dave and I were talking about this this morning before we had our call today here on, on the show floor, is that one of the top conversations is refresh cycles. And he did a poll um, on Twitter, and it's pretty much, people are expecting a refresh. Now, all the, I'm sure the analysts are going to go crazy. What does that mean for economics? Put that aside for a minute. People are thinking about refreshing all their stuff. Servers, PCs. How complicated is that? I mean, what do you see that, that process, timing, um, does it feel like a right time? Is the AIPC ready? What's your vision of, yeah, of the, I, this I mean, transition? Look, we're, we're very bullish on refresh for companies, right? Because it really ties to technical debt in an organization, and not just at the PC side, but at the server and infrastructure side as well. And companies sometimes start to lose the vision of what that technical debt means to them and how it impacts their environment and how it impacts them from a competitive standpoint when other companies are refreshing. And so we really try to drive with our PC as a service them to refresh at least every four years at a, at a minimum. Um, and then you know five years we'll push out, but we've designed our PC as a service program to help them innovate that type of refresh process and program, and we invest up front. It takes us about two years to get net even from a numbers perspective, but it helps them try to drive their refresh. We even built a program that does the analysis of technical debt tied to productivity. Because if you look at a PC today, and a PC say takes you know, uh, over four years uh, to refresh, we show whether it's, it's about 20 to 30 minutes a day of lost productivity on a machine that's over four years old. And then if you tie that to a company's salary and the average salary in an organization, you're able to force refreshes a lot quicker 
That's a lot of time. It, it, it is, and you don't realize it because it's down, it's due to boot time, application runtime. No, it makes perfect sense, time, little stuff. Downtime, right. right, with the machine. We had a customer this year that had 20,000 machines over four years old. They had no budget to refresh. We did the productivity analysis for them, showed them that they were losing about $200 million a year Ooh. in lost productivity. Yeah. They refreshed all 26,000 in one year. So I mean, I, I actually comes up a lot. I asked this CISO um, for a big bank. I won't say the name in New York. They got tons of high-end client. I said, "What's your biggest problem?" You know, typical. He said, "Actually, my biggest problem is boot up time for my PCs." I go, what? "I go, I go, what do you mean?" I go, "How can that be a problem? Just get new PCs." No, no, it's not just the PCs. I have all these agents loaded from a cybersecurity standpoint that they're going through all this boot up. Yep. All these agents are sitting on their machines so they're getting killed on yeah. productivity. Wow. So if you're not on the right side of that, as cyber, data, cyber resilience, ransomware threats, so security is driving a lot of action. What's your yeah. take on that? Do you see that problem too? That's a yeah, really it, interesting point. It's an overhead challenge, right, on the systems. Yeah. And that's why you see the systems, like, you know, five years ago you get away with four gigs of RAM. You know, you can't even start your machine with four gigs of RAM anymore, right? And it's because of a lot of the cybersecurity components that you need, and that's where AI PCs, right, and the new introductions of the Qualcomm chips that Dell has done is going to make a big difference in that productivity capability within the machines and doing more edge work here than doing it on the backside. And, and so I think that's going to really help. So your business basically work with Dell's customers and future customers to refresh the tech inside the company whether it's cloud technology or PCs. We're, we're bullish on on-prem, right? We, we love yeah. on-prem. I really believe that on-prem, look, the, the cloud is there for a reason. It's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. You just need to be smart about what you put up there. I think on-prem is important. There will be a big event that happens. I guarantee it, right? And something big is going to go down. And the companies that are all cloud are not going to be able to work where Dell supports the hybrid cloud environment, right, to push certain workloads up there and other stuff on-prem, I think it's going to be key to you customers. You mean critical failure in the cloud, something could happen. Yeah, you need to do, we, we want customers to do an analysis of the, the applications they can put in the cloud with the lowest risk. What does it cost you per minute if that application's down? And if it's a million dollars a minute, keep it on-prem. Yeah. If it's, you know, $10 a minute, cloud, cloud, cloud. Well, that's why AI is a great win for on-prem because workloads are scoped and data's on site, so this, those constraints now can be quantified and valued, so you can actually point to that. I want to ask you specifically on that point, um, this is another debate in the industry, um, and with respect to cloud, you're right, it's there for a reason, you, use cases is good, be hybrid. cloud There's operations. For everything. What's the, yeah. um, is there re repatriation actually happening from cloud to on-prem, or is on-prem net new use case? I think What's, it's a combination of both what, you're how seeing would you out scope there. That? Yeah, you're definitely seeing it. A lot of folks thought uh, cloud was cheaper, right? And they very quickly realized when they started doing a lot of egress, right, with the data back and forth, that cloud was not necessarily less expensive. Right. right? And there were security risk and attributes that are due to that as well. You've seen leakages and it's certain a big, things. It's a big yeah. thing. It is, absolutely. And so you have customers that are pulling it back in. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to do and it's costly to do once you've left that on-prem journey. Uh, but we're seeing a lot of like I said, you know, moving back out, but also net new. Because AI is very important to be on-prem, right? If you've got important data that you don't want out there in the public mm -hmm. oh, chat exactly. GPTs it's all about and things privacy. that yeah. you need to be doing your own on-prem version where the data is there from an AI perspective. And you're going to be able to access that data a lot quicker and a lot more securely anyway. So we're definitely seeing a lot more on-prem. What, 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 what would be your advice, actually two questions, what's your advice on readiness? and how should companies be ready? What's the best practice for AI, AI, ready, readiness. AI readiness? Yeah, so. It's a better buzzword these days. Yeah, it, it, Are it you is, ready? Yeah. Uh, we, <laughs> so actually we have a, a, I call them my rocket scientist of AI that we have, who actually built for the federal systems integrators an AI readiness tool, right? So it really, it goes in and it asks a bunch of questions about oh, nice. yeah. where they are within their journey, and then it gives them best practices on what to do. You know, ready is, is really relative based on what your risk tolerance is, right? And what you want to do. Look, we're going to secure, and there needs to be guardrails associated with AI. Um, those guardrails are the bad actors don't have. 
And so you really need to start to look at, you know, what are the things we can do to protect ourselves, right, from an right. AI perspective and a company. And I think security is the most important piece out of the gate. And then making sure you have the right hardware to be able to do the AI. Because if you don't, then you're going to struggle and you're going to think, yeah. well, AI is not good for me. It's really it's about the business outcomes. Money. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What are the business outcomes that are going to come from AI, right? That's how you really need to start the conversation. Yeah. Do you feel like a lot of the customers you're working with understand what those business outcomes are? Or are you helping them navigate that? Yeah, I, some of them do, some of them don't, but you have to help them navigate that, right? Because yeah. what is AI going to do for them? You know, you can have this shiny penny, and the shiny penny doesn't give you a business outcome. Why do you need the shiny penny, right? And so each company is going to be different, and you need to sit down and be specific and evaluate with them what they need and what their goals are, and then we can backtrack into, okay, here are the tools to help you get there. I'm, yeah, I'm curious, I feel, when I was asking a similar question to some folks from Dell yesterday, and they, they were saying that I'm from their services team that everyone feels really overwhelmed. And I can imagine you see a little bit of that as people start to navigate this hardware transformation. Do you think that AI is going to accelerate the refresh rate? Do you think the oh, yeah. cycle's going to come down significantly? Oh yeah, uh, well, it's going to accelerate it, but then it's going to extend it later, right? The acceleration oh, yeah. is going to yeah, be, yeah, like you know, get, yeah. get all of the stuff out, get everything AI enabled, but now you're going to have longer life cycles of those products, right, that are going to go beyond three, four, and five years because of the new chipsets, yeah. right, and AI capabilities that are going to be in there. So I think you're going to see an initial <laughs> ingestion of all new stuff, and then I think five-year refreshes is going to be the standard, right, unless Jensen and team pop something new out, Right, that's going to enable and empower the new net level of, yeah. you know, hologram level, you know, PCs out there. I mean, Microsoft used to do that all the time with Windows. The next release just eats up more processing power. Intel's got a new chip. Dell's got new PCs. Same thing's going on here. I'm sure there will, there will be oh, without more, a doubt. more action coming that needs more compute. Look, it keeps us all employed. <laughs> right? Keep it going. <laughs> Business is good. I know. Keep it growing. We love it. Well, we had Dell announce their AI laptops. Do you have customers craving more AI edge devices? Uh, they're definitely looking at it. I, yeah. I don't want to see craving yet, right? Because yeah, they're, they're not sure of the risk, right, that's there. And that's something that you have to do because you also need guardrails around your employees and what they're going to use that for, right? And so you need to have the proper use cases in place. I don't think out of the gate you're going to see every employee is going to get right an AI powered right. PC. <clears throat> you know what you want to look at is, hey, can I give you an AI powered PC that I can turn that piece off until such time as I'm comfortable that you understand what your requirements are as an employee to be able to use that technology at the edge. And I think that's important, right? And that's going to happen, you know, in a lot of areas. I think that's interesting. Yeah, I'm. I'm curious to see what happens after this announcement, and if the market's there, what's where 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 Dell's intersecting in terms of that yeah. that need to buy and and how those are going to sell. We'll we'll have to find out at the next. Oh, they're they're going to sell, right? You're going to have the the. Oh, people world. are going to want to have them to say yeah. they have them for sure. Of course, totally of course. agree with you there, 100. Yeah. percent yeah. I'm curious what they're going to use them for. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You got to identify yeah. what is my business exactly. outcome, yeah. right? And then if I use this PC to do it at the edge, is it going to accomplish that goal better, faster, stronger? And, and again, it's going to make a difference on employee, employee size, employee count, right? And, and we have to change our thoughts. AI is a, is a game changer, it really is. All right, taking off your professional hat. Yeah. What excites you the most about where we're at technologically, personally? Uh, so I'm a, I'm a wearables freak, right? The aura ring and the, the amount of data that I'm able to capture about myself, it's a little depressing when I see the results, but, but at least the... <laughs> the sleep app is yeah, terrible the, for the, me. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, oh really? I should be dead next week, what's going on, right? <laughs> but it, it's, it stopped me from drinking wine. You know, I drank wine before bed and I was always good and now I'm like, I look at my, my results and I'm like, oh that's not good, I got to make some adjustments here. But um, <laughs> you know, that excites me, and you know a lot of the, a lot of the the stuff that is like Minority Report, Iron Man, right type stuff that's happening, right from a from an internet stuff with Apple Vision Pro and some of these other products. I mean, it's just light years ahead of where it was. So I'm really excited to see this. The next ten years is going to be yeah. exponentially crazy, you know, what we see from a technology perspective. Yeah, awesome. I agree. I can't wait. Yeah, it is. It's we're, we're at a really exciting user time. experience going to be completely changed. All right. Yeah. On that note, on that note, last question for you. Yeah. 
next time we have your fabulous self on this stage, yes. what do you hope to be able to say then that we can't yet say now? Oh, interesting. Uh, so selfishly, you know, we're, we are tracking to be a billion dollar company, right? And that's something that we're extremely excited for. You know, I started the company 27 years ago in my basement. You know, year one was $10,000, right? Yeah. And so, Great you know, we're, we're really on, on track to do it. And no outside investment, nobody, no partnership. Good for you. Yeah, you know, organic growth, organic, you know, increasing. So that's one of the things that I hope. And, uh, and, and, I, and I guess that's one of the big things, you know. Um, that counts. It counts. Being a billion counts. dollar company. Being an entrepreneur successful without outside funding is the, top, is the to top, in billion. my opinion, the top of the that's entrepreneurial amazing. pyramid. Yeah. That is the hardest thing to do. It is. Congratulations. It is. Thank you. I, I speak to it a lot. I had a company come to me and say, hey, we're going to raise funds to them. I'm like, why? Well, it's risky what we're doing. I'm like, <laughs> I wouldn't give you a penny if you made that statement. To right. Me, right? <laughs> right. Let's We'd get like that. to waste e somebody else's money. I'm like, what equity do you have in? Oh, it's all sweat equity. I'm like, so none. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, <laughs> Don't. Interesting stuff. Yeah, you could lose your company too if you bring investors in. Oh yeah, you, you lose control. You can't yeah. do the things that you do. Like we're, we're, we're going to transition. I have three boys. They're all slotted to be in the company. One's the CFO, one's going to be the CEO, and then one's going to be the CIO eventually. Three really? boys, ready to go. You got a great legacy. We'll have to bring you back to theCUBE to do a master class on entrepreneurship. I know. On self-funded. We, will, we, will, we will follow up, put a pin in that. We'll yeah. come back Done. to that. What are your Done. son's names? You can say hi to him right now. That's all right. Uh, so Joseph, who's here at the show. Uh, Robert, uh, after the dad, Italians, we do that, we name that way, and <laughs> Nicholas, uh, my three boys. Who's the CFO? Uh, the CFO is Robert. Robert, so Robert make sure that check doesn't bounce. Let's oh, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He know. knows. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, it's been absolutely fantastic having you on the show. Thank you for Thank making you. the time Thank today. Thank you. Really appreciate John, being always a, a part pleasure of it. with you. And thank all of you for tuning in to our three days of live coverage here in Las Vegas, Nevada at Dell Tech World. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.